Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video, we're going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is minimum number and it is an easy level problem. So this particular problem statement says that we have been given an array of n elements and we at like in one operation we can choose any two indices such that array of i should be greater than or equal to array of j right and we can replace array of i with the difference of both of them so array of i minus array of j now we have to minimize the values of the array and after performing any number of such operations we have to return the maximum element that we currently have in our array right so uh, i believe like uh, this problem was itself not very difficult but the key idea of this particular problem is also not very straightforward to think of like you need some uh, like uh, practice to like get off this idea so let us discuss the sample test case that has been given to us so this is the first sample test case that we have and we have three values three two and four so you can observe after uh, you can choose two, these two indices and then you will be left with one two and four and then since we have got a one here now we can do any number of operations and we can make the other two zero so we can take uh, the first two indices and it will be two minus one 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 again one minus one zero one four and you can do this operation four times on the with these two indices and then it will be one zero zero so you will see the last number remaining or the maximum number remaining will be one itself so the most interesting part about this question is that it can only have two answers the only two answers are one and two so it can be either one or it can be either two now let us discuss when is the answer one and when is the answer two so what happens is like uh, for example you take two odd numbers so if you take two odd numbers okay, and you're subtracting them so let's say we have taken five minus three you will get an even number in this case that is two right now you take two even numbers so let's say we have taken eight minus uh, four so we'll get an even number that is four now let's say we have taken an even and an odd number so let's say uh, we have taken uh, six minus three that would give me three and that is an odd number so this particular relation will remain true for all cases when two odds are uh, doing addition or subtraction we will get an even number when uh, two evens are doing an addition or subtraction we will get an even number when one is odd and one is even and we are performing addition or subtraction we will get an odd number right so what happens is uh, whenever we have some uh, array elements a1 let's say this is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 right now even one of them is odd what we can do is we can use this odd number to subtract it from other elements or we can use the smaller even number to for example this number is even we can perform two operations either we can do a1 minus a3 or a3 minus a1 depending upon which one is greater or smaller we don't actually have to like go and do the operations i'm just telling you the idea what will happen when we have an odd number and an even number so let's say even was even so either one of these operations will be possible right so if one of these is possible then the resultant will be odd let's say we have taken two even numbers a1 and a2 so their op their operation result would be an even number and again since we have only considered uh, one odd number we are not considering this case for now even if there were two odd numbers let's just say that a4 is odd after the operation one of them will become even and the other one will remain odd depending upon which number was bigger right so the idea of having one odd number is that whenever we have one odd number we can always use it to subtract and get uh, another odd number right why because for example if a3 was odd we only have two elements a1 and a2 where a1 is even right or let's just say a2 is also odd this is also odd right if we subtract both of them one of them would become even and the other one would still remain odd again we subtract both of them both of them would become odd right so uh, at the end what will happen is you will remain with one odd integer always and you can always reduce the smallest number to the smallest odd integer that is one so the key idea is whenever you have one odd number at least one odd number the answer will be one 
otherwise the answer will be uh, 2 now why is this always working because i have already shown you let's say we have taken two odd numbers initially right if you do subtraction between them you will get one even and one odd number right now uh, this now this can also be a starting state and this can also be a starting state right that the both are odd or one is even one is odd. right so let's just mark it as starting so if this was the starting state this one then from this state you will get to this particular state now again from this particular state you can go to two states so for example if the second number was uh, bigger then you will go to uh, this particular position if the first number was bigger then you will go to this particular position in both of the cases if both of them become odd again you can go to one of those positions so you will see at the end if you try to reduce them to the minimum numbers then the minimum answer would be if both of them are odd then the answer would be 1 comma 1 otherwise if 1 is even 1 is odd the answer would be 0 comma 1 in both of the cases the maximum element is 1 right so this is how it is working now if we have let's say uh, only even numbers so uh, if you try to re reduce both of these numbers to the smallest possible what you can get is at the end is 2 comma 2 because no matter which operation you will apply both of them would still remain even right so the minimum answer would be 2 so this would be the solution for today's problem and it is even if you get uh, like you just have to traverse the whole array and you get if at least one odd number then uh, the final answer would be 1 otherwise the final answer would be 2 right so let us have a look at the code now so it's very simple i just created so like this this well variable was for another approach i was also trying so we don't add we don't need that in this particular approach now so what i've done is i've initialized the count variable with zero and i'm just traversing through the array and i'm just incrementing the value of count whenever this particular part is true that is array of i and one is true so this indicates that the current number is odd so if the value of count is greater than zero i'll return my answer one otherwise i'll return my answer two so this would be the solution of today's problem of the day i hope you guys were able to understand the solution and i hope you guys were able to get some new idea from this particular problem and uh, if you did then please consider uh, subscribing to the channel it's always free of course and if you don't find the videos interesting later you can always unsubscribe so till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye